Hello YouTube, my name is Nero, today we have some Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered and I wanted to make this video for Raven Software and Infinity Ward. I just want to ask you guys, because right now it seems like the two development studios for this year's Call of Duty, Infinite Warfare and Modern Warfare Remastered, it seems like you guys are like the abused children of Activision. Are you guys okay? Are things good over there? Like, can you guys blink for me if you guys are okay? Because I know you guys can't talk with him there, but could you guys just let us know what's happening over there? Because it's been freaking weird watching this from a community perspective, trying to watch Infinite Warfare and Modern Warfare Remastered Mastered Unfold has just been astounding to me. Like, it started off with Modern Warfare Mastered initially giving us the remaining six maps from Call of Duty 4, which was fantastic. They even gave us Winter Crash, they gave us the Winter Crash event, and of course, the special camos for that event. It was great. But then they also added in supply drops, right? Which brought with them melee weapons, weapon kits, camos, titles, emblems, character shirts, and everything else. Over there at Infinity Ward, they have added in so many supply drop updates already, with the last one being over 600 freaking 600 items what is up with that like I don't quite understand that system now more updates are going to be coming in the future we already know that we're learning over there for Modern Warfare Remastered that in the next update we are going to be getting working kill cams again we are going to be getting the spawn system looked at and hopefully addressed to the point where it's going to be more like it was back in Call of Duty 4 collaterals are apparently going to be updated I noticed you guys did not say fixed but you said updated but hopefully they're going to be like they were back in Call of Duty 4 and I know you guys haven't officially said anything but we do know for a fact that nine new attachments are in the game files and most likely will be coming to the game in the near future alongside at least two new weapons the cam Chaka 12 and the xmlar as well as i'm sure a bunch of other cosmetic filler content like what is up with this right like why do we keep getting so much downloadable content to modern warfare remastered and to infinite warfare without first fixing things like sure you guys have addressed that in modern warfare remastered we're gonna be getting fixed kill cams and fixed collaterals and so on and so forth but why not just do that stuff now and then give us all the cosmetic crap and supply drop stuff later on like why do we have to wait why can't we just put that stuff out now why can't we prioritize fixing the games and making them better before adding in a bunch of supply drop stuff and 600 pieces of freaking filler content like we saw in infinite warfare you know it's been it's been long theorized right that activision is behind everything right they are the big bad they are the shadow looming in the darkness right that forces every bad decision that the community doesn't like and it's making it so the developers have to do what they say otherwise they're all fired because Activision can do that they'll just fire an entire studio if they don't do everything they say right I don't know the ins and outs right I I'm not I'm not a game developer I've never worked on a game I I have worked on a custom zombies map and I didn't make it past the first room like I don't even I, I have no idea what goes into your guys' day-to-day -day lives and into your jobs but I imagine that Raven Software and Infinity Ward, they have a hand in this, right? I imagine their studio profits from supply drops and all of this stuff, just same way Activision does. Maybe, maybe more, maybe less, but they have to profit from it, right? I think to immediately push all blame on Activision is a bit irresponsible, right? I have a feeling that Infinity Ward and Raven Software and Sledgehammer and Treyarch, I think they're just as in on this as Activision is. But at the same time, I do wonder just how on board these studios themselves actually are. A lot of people like to think that, that going back to what I said earlier, that these studios are basically like the, the abused children of Activision that are forced to do everything Activision says. But I wonder if that's really the case. Because, like, remember when they decided to fly out a bunch of YouTubers to play the Modern Warfare Remastered maps early? And while they were there, the YouTubers were able to play with melee weapons as well as other cosmetic DLC camos and stuff. While they were there, YouTubers, while talking to the de developers, like, face-to-face, -face, in the same room, they asked them, like, are we going to be keeping Supply Drops cosmetic only? Only. And they said they would like to keep them cosmetic only, but they did not guarantee it. They said they would like to keep supply drops cosmetic only. They would like to keep weapons out of there. But not two days later, they had a stealth update for Modern Warfare Remastered, which added in the Kamchaka 12 and the XMLAR to the game files. So do they really care? Were they just trying to save face there? I have a feeling that there are people within Raven Software who do not agree with this business model. They don't agree with supply drops and, and supply drop weapons and stuff like that. But also, also, I bet there's a bunch of people within Raven Software who do like that business model because at the end of the day, they are focusing on the bottom line. Over at Infinity Ward, they never claimed to not want weapons and supply drops. Like, that was a core function since day one. And it goes back to a video I did, which actually did pretty well. It was the It's Time to Face Facts video. 
It's true. I mean, the Call of Duty series, this is what it is now. This is what it is as supply drop weapons, downloadable content, and prioritizing DLC and profit motives over actually making games good. And that's not only true of Infinity Ward, who has a ton of problems with Infinite Warfare that apparently have not been addressed, but they are also already on like their third supply drop update. Like, I haven't been keeping a ton of track of that game. I've, I'm level 17 and I don't play it. But to my understanding, they have had at least three supply drop updates and they have added in like over 600 items just in the last update alone and they're doing all this in a game that still doesn't have working leaderboards apparently there's still a search and destroy bomb site glitch that's being exploited right now apparently there's a bunch of problems with the game personally i don't know i don't play the game but apparently there's a lot of issues with the game and they're prioritizing adding in you know things that they can profit off of rather than actually fixing their game and it's not even just infinity ward that's actually guilty of this raven software is doing the same thing like sure they're working on collaterals right they're working on spawns they're working on kill camps if that stuff is fixed why not update their game right now rather than making us wait. And I'll tell you why they're going to make us wait. There's actually two reasons. Number one, it costs them money to actually push through an update, right? So they would much rather put it all in one giant update rather than having a bunch of small little tiny updates. Number two, they're doing this to actually soften the blow, right? Because it's been leaked. It's in the game files. I made several videos on it. We know weapons are coming to Modern Warfare Master. We know nine new attachments are coming to Modern Warfare Master. And probably a bunch of extra kits, probably a bunch of extra shirts and everything else. They're doing this to soften the blow, right? So we're going to get this giant update which is going to add in supply drop weapons. It's going to add in all these extra things. But at the same time, they're going to be like, hey, we fixed collaterals. Hey, you know, we fixed the spawns a little bit and you guys got your kill cams back. They're doing it to soften the blow, right? Bottom line, that is why they are doing it. And at the end of the day, that, that's what they're about right now. They're about profit. And I'm not here to say, you know, that profit's a bad thing. You know, I'm all for make your money, man, but do it in a good way. Do it in a way that, that the community is going to be happy about. You know, if you want to add weapons to the game, why not make it so we can actually just purchase them? Why are you putting them in supply drops? I'll tell you why profit. They're putting in them in supply drops alongside 600 pieces of crap filler to make it so it's very hard for you to actually get the thing that you want. Therefore, you're going to have to spend more money to actually try to acquire the things that you want like that's why they do this right and sales are down this year last we knew sales are down for infinite warfare about 50 percent as compared to black ops 3 i don't know if that has changed at all but last i knew they were down about 50 percent and that's even with the added bonus of modern warfare remastered and the stockholders and investors for call of duty they're worried right? Their faith has been shaken in the Call of Duty series, and thus, Activision is scrambling to earn as much money as humanly possible this year with downloadable content. This is why we're seeing so much DLC already. This is why we are going to probably see more DLC this year than we have ever seen in the Call of Duty series, because they are really trying to get their profits back up in line with what they were like last year with Black Ops 3. Sales are down a lot, therefore, they have to make their money back, therefore, more DLC, more uh, supply drop stuff, more cosmetic crap. It's just, it's going to be basically the entire year. We're going to be getting so many updates, I would assume, because that's what they need to do to try to make more money this year. You know what the trouble with that is? They're burning the goodwill of what's left of their community. Lots of YouTubers are starting to turn on Call of Duty because of their continued greedy practices. Now, I can't speak for everybody, but I can speak for myself. And I've also seen other YouTubers like T. Martin. I've seen Chaos X Silencer, Prestige is Key, Drifter, Marksman. The list goes on and on. I'm sure I'm missing a couple of guys here, but there's a lot of people in this community, obviously. Lots of these people disagree with the business model that they're implementing right now, right? Lots of these people have decided to basically boycott Infinite Warfare because they don't like that style of a game. They don't like the business model. They don't like the setting. They don't like the movement. For whatever reason, a lot of people have stopped playing Infinite Warfare. A few of us are solely focusing on Modern Warfare Remastered. Some of us are expanding into other games, and some of us have stopped playing Call of Duty entirely. Now, of course, I'm a bit biased here because I am a YouTuber, but... YouTubers and live streamers, they are a big part of the Call of Duty community, right? YouTubers are, they're part of what launched Call of Duty to the main stage back in the day. We promote games, we discuss games, we, bottom line, we extend the life cycle of most Call of Duty games because we are a big part of the community and we help build the community to where it is today. Games that don't have a huge following on YouTube or Twitch, typically they don't end up being super successful. This is actually why you see so many developers embracing YouTube. They're, they're embracing Twitch over the years and, 
describing how important that YouTube and Twitch is to the success of a video game. It's gotten to the point where some developers will even blame YouTubers for the failings of their game. They'll claim that because no YouTuber picked up their game, the community was never built up around the game and thus the game failed and died. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. I mean, it's it's not the fault of the YouTuber that a game died, right? Obviously, I mean, a, a YouTuber does not have to play their game. We're not obliged to play games or build communities around games. We decide to build communities around games that we enjoy. And there's a lot of us that built our community, built our channels around Call of Duty because we love the series. But over the years, with the continued shady and greedy practices by Activision and all of the studios combined, a lot of Call of Duty channels are starting to move on. The Call of Duty community is starting to dwindle down. You know, back in its heyday, it was super popular back in MW2, MW3, and Black Ops, whereas it's gotten worse and worse every single year in terms of sales. And therefore, I think less and less people are actually playing the series. In my opinion, one of the things that's keeping Call of Duty where it is, one of the things that's keeping Call of Duty as the best-selling game every single year, regardless of the fact that the franchise is on the decline in terms of sales, is the community. Everybody that's participating, you know, from the best top YouTubers down to the smallest YouTubers to all the live streamers to the people commenting on the videos and partaking and actually playing the games and buying the DLC and every one of us in the Call of Duty community, we are responsible for keeping Call of Duty where it is as still the best-selling game every single year. But here's the thing. A lot of us are going to start leaving soon, right? Call of Duty, Activision, all these studios, they are right now burning what's left of the goodwill of their communities in an effort to just make a quick buck, in an effort to just try to appease the people who are investing in the series. So here's the thing. No one's going to invest in your series if nobody's going to play it, and people are going to stop playing it if you continue up with these business practices. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the true end of the Call of Duty series. If they continue down this road that they are on, that will be the end of the Call of Duty series. It may take one year, may take two years, may take five or ten years, but eventually the Call of Duty series is going to go down, and it's, people are just going to stop playing it if they continue down the road that they are on right now. I want to know what is happening, and this goes back to the very beginning of the video. I'm talking kind of directly to Raven Software and Infinity Board, and I guess all the studios right now. We as a community want to know what is happening. We need you guys to be more transparent across the board. Like, we need to know what's happening, and whether or not, you know, Activision's forcing you to do these business practices, or if it's kind of like a joint thing, if half you guys don't care, half you guys are into it, whatever the case may be, you need to understand that if Activision's not going to do anything, you need, as the studios, to do whatever you can, whatever power you have, you need to leverage that to try to make Call of Duty what it was before we start going down the road of just bazillions of microtransactions and DLC and paid content and locking exclusive content behind RNG paywalls and everything that has been wrong with Call of Duty over the past couple of years. You guys, as the studios, have the power to change that. You know, again, it goes back to this community perception that apparently Activision's like just apparently like this abusive father to you guys who's forcing you to do everything and if that's the case that really sucks could you tell us that'd be great like could we somehow know and get some confirmation somehow like it'd be great if we could get like an interview or something i have no idea but of course there's probably ndas i don't know what would happen maybe if we could talk to somebody who uh, used to work at Treyarch, maybe during Black Ops 3, and then quit or was fired, and like, he could then tell all, or maybe somebody at Infinity Ward, or maybe somebody at Raven. I don't know. I would love to be able to have an interview. I'd love to be able to discuss this with somebody, even if it's not me. If, if, if interview with somebody else bigger than me, I don't care. It'd be great if we could just learn what is happening behind the scenes. And it would be also great if you guys and studios could use whatever power it is you do have, because again, we have no idea from our perspective what kind of power you actually have in this relationship with Activision. Use what power you have to try to make Call of Duty what it used to be. Try to limit the amount of supply drop stuff. If you're going to be adding in weapons to supply drop, how about not adding in 600 pieces of filler to dilute the loot pool? How about you just make it a fair business model where, hey, I bought a supply drop. Hey, I got some good stuff out of it rather than, oh boy, I got the shirt. I got the other shirt and I got a camo. Oh boy. Like that's what supply drops are now. Like you rarely actually get anything good because there's so much filler crap. So like if supply drops are going to be in the game, and I think a lot of us have kind of come to grips with the fact that this is the Call of Duty series now and we are going to have supply drops whether we like it or not. If they're going to be in the game, try to make them more fair, right? Focus more on making your games good. Like, if there's a problem with your game, like kill cam's not working, that should be priority number one. Like, it's 
it's the holiday, oh, the holiday season's like kind of come and gone, but like people just now got Modern Warfare Remastered, right? They just now got Infinite Warfare, and there's these problems in the game, and this is their first experience. Like people that just got Modern Warfare Remastered, like for example, for Christmas, they're playing the game and they are seeing all these issues. Like kill camps are not working. The spawn system is not like it was back in Call of Duty 4. If they're into sniping, collaterals simply don't freaking work. That should be priority number one. It should not be trying to get out more DLC content. It should not be adding in more supply drop stuff. And the same thing's true over there at Infinity Ward with Infinite Warfare. Now, I don't play the game, right? I don't know all the problems with the game, but I know there are a lot. People mention it all the time in the comments of my videos. I see it on Twitter. I see it on Reddit. There are issues with the game, and you just added in total over 700 items to supply drops, and that's not even your first supply drop update. Like, why are you prioritizing that over other aspects of the game? Right now, amidst all the negative feedback and all the big YouTubers making negative videos about your game, you guys said, okay, we're going to find new ways to get you guys parts, and we're going to find new ways to you know, make these camos even better and stuff like that, but just make your games better. You know, focus more on making a good product. Like back in the day, that's what Call of Duty was. They were focused on making a good product. We got three or four DLCs every single year. They were all just map packs which would include maybe zombies or something like that. But the primary focus was getting sales. That's how you guys made your money back in the day. You made your money off of sales and how you got sales was making sure your game was as good as possible the entire year. Right. It seems like you guys as, as, as developers have given up after like the first month. Like you just are not paying as much attention to your community. Your community managers are barely communicating at all on social media. Your games are not being updated that quickly. Like what's happening here, guys? What's happening? Make the game good. I don't want to meme and say make COD great again. Just make your games good. Focus on making your game good. And if you do that, I think you're going to find that people are going to be less, they're going to give you less hatred for more shady stuff, like adding in supply drop weapons and stuff like that, adding in more attachments. Like people are going to not hate that stuff as much if you're working really hard every single day to make sure your game is as good as possible, while also using whatever power it is you have to try to limit the amount of stuff coming to the game that you know the community is going to hate. Well, those are my thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. I kind of wanted to do like a pseudo letter, I suppose, to Raven Software and Infinity Ward. And feel free to tweet this video to them so you make sure they see that. I, I don't want to be one of those guys that puts at Raven Software and at Infinity Ward in the title. I think that's spammy and I think it makes me look bad. It, it's going to taint the message of the video, I think. So if you guys want to tweet to them, feel free, but I'm not going to, you know, at them in the title or anything like that. But ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts down there in the comment section below. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.